Oh hi, welcome to another edition of Hand Lay Tracks and 3D Printed Trains with your host, Socrates. Today we're going to take a look at a sped up version of me building a number 6 right hand turnout using the number 6 through a turnout jig. I made a left hand turnout with this jig, now I'm making a right hand. Next I'll make an actual three way and eventually I'll make a number 4 Y, all of which you can make with the same jig. There are some minor changes you have to make to make it work, but for the most part it works out quite well and the geometry is exactly the same. So let's take a look at about eight times the speed uh, of what I did to make this right hand turnout. There's also the full length version, it's about two hours, and I think it's a bit of an ASMR video because it's just the sound of me slowly working on a turnout. So anyway, the uh, turnout, this is the previous one I made that was the left hand. You start by making a frog. There's basically four parts to a turnout. The frog, which sp uh, splits the turnout from one direction to the other. The stock rails, which are the long rails that go on the outside of the turnout. The closing rails, which are the ones that move when you change direction. And the guard rails, which are the small pieces that go to keep the train from trying to jump the tracks when it's actually having to make a change. So here I am. Uh, trying to get ready to solder the frog because once you get the frog you have to trim it with a, a tool that sets it to the right angle and then you use a, a file and you sort of file it away and then you make sure the tip is nice and strong remove anything that's weak and it fits into the jig in a nice position like that in a nice perfect uh, angle and then you solder it. Now this is a fiddly step putting in the cross ties. Now again I'm using the three-way jig but I'm only making a right hand turnout, so I'm not using a lot of those middle uh, slots because they're for the three way, not for the turnout. And I sped this up even faster because if you're doing it by hand, this takes a really long time. I'm in the process of uh, 3D printing a, uh, a device that you can slip the, the ties into and it holds it to the right level, and you can make this whole process a whole lot faster. And now I'm moving on to adding the stock rail. Again, I'm just making a right hand turnout. So it's a straight rail on the left and a curved rail on the right. These are the uh, the two outer rails are always one long solid piece. And they'll be the first thing that I go ahead and solder into position here. They also need to have a cutout where the closure rails meet the rail. There's a you have to remove a piece of the of the stock rail, the outside, so that closure rail has a has sort of a pocket to hide inside of because you have to make it perfectly smooth where the wheels come in so it goes one way or the other. So in both cases you have to uh, cut enough of a space to allow for that. And now basically I'm installing the actual rail once everything seems cut into position, everything looked right. I'm using blue tack, just sort of a sticky tack to hold things in place. I'm making sure that the shape of the rail is correct here because you don't want to force it into the jig, you want it to be naturally curved close as you can get to the shape, that way there's no forces built up into it. And again, I just stuck everything down with this blue tack, and at that point, ready to go ahead and solder the individual ties. Now, you, once you cut the ties, it's very important to make sure you've gapped all the ties, because otherwise you'll have a dead short between the two sides of the, of the rail, because one's positive and one's negative. And also, the frog in the middle gets isolated, because if you're going one way or the other, that frog changes uh, polarity, because if you're going one direction, the frog will be on the left side of the track. If you're going the other direction, the frog will be on the right side. So the last step is to actually cut isolation around the frog. But the little gaps you can see on the ties were cut with a small file to go ahead and make sure that the uh, there's no short between the two sides. And if you watch the full length video, you can see this all in excruciating and slow detail. Because, like I say, it's a two, the, the full length is two hours. And of course it took me slightly longer than that for sure, but here I'm basically going down, soldering each rail to the ties one at a time, and you don't do both sides on some of them, if there's going to be like the guard rail or a closing rail, you only do the one side. But as you can see, pretty quickly it's starting to look a lot like a turnout. You know, once I get through done doing this one side, then the, some of the harder work begins, which is making the closure rails on the inside because not only does it have to be curved, but it has to be filed down to a perfect little point in there. Again, using the tool, it's not that bad. You set it up. But again, it becomes fiddly, and, and there's some precision involved in here. 
So this is the closure rails, that's the straight one, cutting it to length, and then that's the curved one. You have to make a little nip into it and then you bend it slightly, and this is to uh, the point tool, so as to file that point into it so when it goes into the side pocket there's a nice tiny point so it's a small thing and you have to make sure that these are nice and cleaned up and since this is, you're going to do this work once and it's going to be sitting there for who knows how long I try to make sure that it's as close to good as I can you know close to perfect as I can make it and then once you want to get that length in exactly the right place so when you cut it and bend it it's it fits nice and everything works well so this was a sort of a critical piece so um, taking my time to make sure I do it right. Like I say, this is just the second turn that I've done. And now finally I'm getting there where I'm actually clipping the turn out to make the bend. Now it's got the nice little bend to it. You have to clip the end off of it. And then there's a nice little critical step once you cut the end off of it. You have to bevel a little bit of a, a rounded edge to it. So as the train wheel comes in, it doesn't come into a square. It comes into, a, again, an encouraging position to make the wheel go into the right side of the flange. And one of the most important things I use in this is a little rail gauge that has the specific size for flange ways. And you'll see me moving this little small gauge back and forth because that, that way you know you have just the right width for the for wheels to pass through. And if that, if that goes through smoothly, then the wheels go through nice and smoothly. And my experience so far with the three that I've made is that when, uh, when they're done and the gauge says they're nice, the wheels seem to go through very, very nicely. I only have made three turnouts. I haven't built any straight pieces yet. So as of yet, I don't really have any uh, train tracks to really test with an actual running train. But it's getting a lot closer. And at this point, again, I was making sure that everything seemed to fit nicely. You can see the uh, the frog is now looks like a normal train track. And again, that's the gauge. Um, I'm making sure that the frog is gives enough space with these in this position that when the frog gets put, is put in there, there will be a proper gauge, proper gap between the tracks so that the wheels will flow nicely. So finally I'm going ahead and in here and, and installing the, uh, I think that the, the, the track didn't seem, it get, something seemed off and I was trying to make sure it was right. Again, this is just the second one I built. And it's a lot harder to use a three-way to make turnouts than just the proper three-way, although this is a much easier thing to make than a three-way. Then you go ahead and solder each of the pieces and this is if you're not good at soldering you will eventually get well better at it that's for sure and making sure that the frog is going to fit properly and once the frog was gapped properly go ahead and I believe solder in the frog with a nice little teeny truck which is a single remove truck you can go ahead and check to make sure everything feels good because it's basically a tiny little train and now going ahead and holding everything down it's, again it's critical to make sure that as you heat it up with the solder you then use something to hold it down. I was trying to use wood at one point but that the curved nose on the plier seemed to work just about best. Now at this point the guardrails this is the last thing that has to be installed I was first making sure they were positioned right they had to do a little bit more prep work to get them together and uh, once again, tell you how long this takes. This is sped up five times again faster because I, again I wanted to make sure they were in there right. Because if the guardrails work nicely as they come by, the train will essentially be re-railed. They do really actually. It really does actually work as a re-railer. Now the fact that I made this on the uh, on the three-way as opposed to on a uh, regular turnout means that I had to flip it over. I also, you can see on the long version, I rushed that step. I did not put the little tiny piece of paper, which I'm doing now, to keep the moving bar off, so I had to free it and do this step a second time. So you put a tiny little piece of paper between the closure rail and the, uh, and the side rail, and that keeps it from soldering together, which I didn't do. And 
Once you've done that, you can do the other side. And in this case, you put a little tiny gap. You can use a tie, a little solder, a little copper tie as a gap in there. And you slip the tie in there. It keeps the rail just far enough away, which is enough for the flange to go through. And then again, put a piece of piece of paper around it, and then you can go ahead and solder the other moving piece down. And that way, you have both of your closure rails are soldered down to the throw bar. And now. As you move it back and forth, you can see that it moves nicely back and forth, and that's essentially a finished turnout. Except for the fact that I didn't build it in a regular jig, so I have to add two more beams to the bottom. Now, I could do it with the turnout with the jig as I have it, except they would be in a slightly different place, and I have some of the quick tie wooden turnout uh, tie setups at Fast Track Cells, and I wanted to use some of them, so I wanted to make this one actually accurate to the to the plant to the plants but it really wasn't that that hard to make I was really had a good time to make it and you can see it looks pretty well with the with the the, the train trucks running along it and the only other stage was to make sure that the frog was soldered on the back side because you have to reinforce the frog at the point that goes into the into the between the two turn directions so you put a little solder on that and then clean it up with a nice brush and after that I go ahead and make sure that it's uh, it's going to be there's no shorts yeah there were a few places that didn't feel it so good so again you hit it with a file any place that doesn't feel right just hit it with a file this is where the closure rail goes into it I wanted to make sure that that was nice and smooth and when you kind of push the truck against it a little bit and if you can feel a bump you know you, you know if you feel a bump then you should probably fix it so it's it's if there's a problem, it'll bother you for the rest of the time you use the train. And then I went through and made sure there were no shorts, that the the frog in the middle was isolated. And in the end, it was a, a nice project, and I had a good time making it. And I think if you want to make yourself a turnouts, Fast Tracks makes a really nice jig. I'm no no way affiliated with them. I'm just a client, and I thought the the product was really good. It's it helps a lot to make a track of turnout using the the jig and their process and uh, if you want to watch the whole long version or just listen to it it's about two hours you can see the link should be there and uh, coming up will be how I do the three-way and then I'll make a Y with it and I also bought the number four turnout which is just a regular turnout jig and we'll make a video of that and all that slowly will come together and look like a time saver layout with a ingle neck Y attached to it which has gotten a little bit more involved because I think I want to add a runaround because why not? So thanks for watching and if you liked it, hit like and subscribe and we'll again see you sometime around the tracks. See you soon. I'm going to pretend I walked off.